Hello gamers, today we're going to talk about the Diablo 4 closed beta. And there she is. Save us. Did I just find a legendary? No way, the Edge Master's Bone Blade. Game connection is lost. Your client has been disconnected. Here we go. They were talking about this. Only option is to exit and go back in, guys. Yep. 10 minutes. Damn, man. God, that sucks, man. What a waste of my time. With VIP URCD key, you can install and activate Windows for only 16 bucks. Hey. That's pretty good. It's fast, easy, and 100% legit. You can now enter my new promo code for 2023, GV25, which will now save you 25% on your purchase. So get rid of that Windows activation watermark and get your system activated today. It also works for Windows 11 as well. Check the links in the description. Hey guys, and welcome to my first impressions video of the recent closed beta for Diablo 4. Now, before we hop into everything that I really like about this game and you know some of the things that also that I didn't like about the game, let me first preface this whole video by reminding you that this is a beta test of the game. This is for the purpose of them testing out the servers and testing out the current build of the game that it's in right now. And I know they're expecting problems and they're probably counting on us, the players, to point those problems out and let them know what needs to be changed before the actual launch in June. So, all right, with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that I really enjoyed about the game this closed beta weekend. So once I finally got into the game, you are greeted by this really cool intro cinematic and guys, it, this game is really good with its cutscenes and cinematics and all that kind of stuff. Blizzard is kind of known for that, and this game is no exception. And honestly, I'll talk about the story a little more later in the video. And after all these cinematics and cutscenes, you are hit with the character creator. Now, this is actually really cool and offers quite a bit of customization for a game that will really be played almost completely from the top-down perspective. But anyway, you can customize everything from your character's build, the skin tone, eye color, makeup, tattoos and even more the cool thing about this is that all of your customizations to your character actually carry over into like the cinematics of the game so it makes the game just that much more immersive with a bit more of that RPG feel to it as well and then in this version of the game you get to choose from two different difficulties and of course I chose the harder one because I've been playing Diablo games for years now so I decided that I'd probably be okay with that harder difficulty now this first thing I'm gonna talk about may have story spoilers so if you care about that sort of thing maybe just skip to the next part of the video and and don't pay attention to this part. Anyway, the first thing that jumped out to me about this game right off the bat is the story. This game is dark, you guys. You start the adventure as a wanderer, like always, but in this game, they lean more towards the dark and gory aspects of Diablo uh, and even interject it into the story, which is actually good in my opinion. I constantly found myself getting excited for what was going to happen next and wanting to progress through it, which is a huge departure from the previous title in Diablo 3, whose story was really lackluster at best in my opinion. Next, let's talk about the atmosphere of the game. They absolutely nailed this. Like I said, the game is dark, dingy, and gory, and I and the art style really caters to those points as well. Um, all around the world, you'll find bloody bodies, decapitated heads, and guys, the music. Ah, yes, the music. They finally got back to the roots of the series and made the music sound very similar to Diablo 2, which is great because the game's music is so iconic and is what really keeps the creepy tone of the game. All right, next I want to move into what is probably the most important part of the game besides the atmosphere, and that's the overall gameplay and mechanics. So gameplay during the closed beta actually felt very smooth and meaningful. It's very much the Diablo 3 style of fighting as you have a couple of resource builder spells and then all of your spender spells that can be really devastating if you have 
have the right combos put together. Now, the skills in the skill tree are very in-depth and there's a lot of them, so it makes it very easy to get overwhelmed possibly for a new player, but on either hand, it lends to experimentation and different types of builds, and I had a lot of fun with doing this with the rogue character that I was playing all weekend. At the start of the playthrough, I kind of fell into this seeking, piercing arrow and quick stab build, but then slowly progressed it into more of a traps and multi-arrow build towards the end, which was very fun. Now, gear also plays a huge role in the way that you play this game. So, gear seemed to be pretty abundant and started to drop quite often, but didn't seem to be the loot shower that Diablo 3 was. I liked that most every piece of new gear seemed meaningful and actually added to my character's playstyle with certain stats that buffed the attacks that I was doing. Now, it did take me a bit of getting used to and reading all the stats to figure out what they were doing, but at the beginning of the game like this, you honestly just start equipping basically whatever makes you do the most damage, right? Uh, it wasn't until I found my first legendary items that I realized that they can really help dictate a build like in Diablo 3, but in my opinion, they do it a little bit better in Diablo 4 so far, but I really have to see how these are handled towards the end game of the full release and see if they're meaningful when you find them, or if this is just going to be another constant like min-max gear grind like Diablo 3 was. Okay, let's move into some exploration. So this is something that you'll be doing a lot. So how does this feel? Well, you can really just go out into the map and run around the world and it always seems like there's something for you to do. There's random events that require you to kill a certain number of enemies or fill these blood circles while killing enemies to get a chest filled with loot. There's also these little cellar areas that are basically a very small dungeon with one elite packet th in them that you kill and get their loot. And of course, there's full dungeons all over the map that offers some of the classic dungeon delving experiences of the previous games. There's also towns and waypoints to discover uh, with every type of vendor that you can think of. And in short, there's a lot to explore in this game because the map seems to be pretty huge. Now, the map, I did have a little bit of issues with the way they lay out the map. I mean, you can zoom out and zoom in and everything like that, but they do not have a feature where you can have the map overlay while you're playing right now. They only have it so you can press like the start button and then go to the map. I wish they would change this because like, you know, OG Diablo 2 players like me, we remember having the overlay map so you can see it while you're, you're traversing the world and stuff like that. So I really hope that's something they take into account and maybe change later. So I already mentioned dungeons, but I want to delve a bit deeper pun intended, into how these guys work. So I have to be honest, they are really fun for the first couple hours that you're in them, but after a while, you'll start to notice that they all become pretty similar and all have this random locked room at the end that you have to find a key for so you can get into the boss fight room. So this is something I really hope they improve upon before release because dungeon delving is a core part of what makes Diablo games fun, and honestly, if this is like the exact same experience throughout the entire game, it's gonna get really boring. Now I just mentioned boss fights, so let's talk about those really quick. Boss fights are honestly pretty challenging, you guys. I mean, I'm not the best gamer by any means, but I actually did die a few times trying to take down various bosses, and it did make me actually think about the mechanics the bosses use and like their ads and all that kind of thing, and how to best navigate each fight and come out with a win. So what I'm really trying to say here is that it didn't seem to be like a face roll and something that is too easy where I could just kind of press a couple of buttons and get the win every time. I actually had to kind of think about what attacks I was using and how to best maneuver around the boss's attacks as well. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the not so good stuff I experienced and I'll start this off with the server queue time. So. I'm not sure what it is with Blizzard games, but every single one I've tested seems to have an issue like this with their servers, and in this game, I actually had to wait a full 50 minutes to get into the game on the first day of the beta launch, so all I can say is I hope they have this issue fixed for this next open beta weekend, because honestly, it's going to be very, very annoying if we have to all sit in a super long queue just to get into the game again. And to add to the server issue problem, there seemed to be a widespread issue of server disconnects going on for players as well. I saw that a lot of people had these servers issues when playing with friends or using crossplay with different systems. Um, but me personally, I only experienced this one time uh, in my second play session. I randomly had a server error and then I was not able to actually get back into my player, my, my character's game. I could go to the menus and do all that kind of thing, but it would not let me reconnect to the game. So what I ended up having to do was, of course, close the game and reopen it and reconnect to the server. And then what happened? I had to wait in a queue again. So again, for this next beta weekend, I really hope they have that issue fixed because if not, that's going to be a huge hindrance for a lot of players. All right, guys. Anyway, to conclude my experience in this first beta weekend, I have to say that honestly, 
I've been having a lot of fun with this game, okay? My initial review of the game is that I actually really, really like it. I like the art style. I like the vibe of the game. Uh, I like how dark it is. I'm really, really stoked about that. I think they're going the right direction with it. And I actually like the way the game plays. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Even for its shortcomings, a couple little technical things that may be wrong with it, and the fact that I haven't really figured out the whole gear thing yet, personally, because I haven't played enough of it probably, but I think I'll get there. But anyway, I honestly, at this point, can't wait to play more of it, and I'm very excited to play this next open beta weekend and try a new class of character, and I think it might have to be the Necro or the Druid. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments what you guys think I should play, and also let me know down there if you guys took part in the beta already and uh, what class you played and what your experience was, or if you haven't played yet, let me know what you guys are thinking of playing when it comes to this next open beta weekend, like what class you guys want to play. But anyway, that's all for now and I'll catch you guys in the next video.